What a wild game in L.A. today. Lions do it again. Get a win. Get out of Dodge. And now 7-2. and two. You are Locked On Lions. Your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's going on, everybody? Matt Derry with you on a Sunday, November 12th into Monday, November 13th. What a game. What a what a, what a finish today in L.A. Lions go into SoFi, knock off the Chargers today, 41-38. to 38. You know, I put on my Twitter feed, at Derry Speaks, a uh, little video at the end, and it said, uh, Lions survive. And, of course, some of you Lions fans of me, survive, we won. What are you talking about? Arr! Relax. Everybody calm down. All right? Could be a poor choice of words on my part, but the Lions did survive today because they were up by 14 points. They were dominating the first half. They had another crappy third quarter. The Chargers scored five consecutive touchdowns. Five possessions, five touchdowns in the second half. The Lions never stopped them. It was all touchdowns, and yet the Lions still won. A 41-yard Riley Patterson field goal at the buzzer. Shades of last year in Jacksonville when he was kicking for the Jaguars and they came back and beat the Chargers. I mentioned it the other day in the crossover with with Dan from Locked On Chargers. We want it to be a close game. We know the Chargers never win close games and always blow it. We knew the Lions were going to be due to have a shootout, and it happened today. And yet, despite everything that went wrong, we're going to get into everything. The Lions won. It's a W. Doesn't matter if it was 41 to 3, 41 to 38, 411 to nothing. Uh, 10 to 6. Uh, My buddy uh, Joe Grizzlack, his wife wife, and his wife Stacy, shout out to them. Their listeners, their son played a flag football game today. It was 35 to 2. All right. No matter what the score is, it counts as a win. And the Lions remain sole possession of first place at seven and two in the division. We welcome to Lockdown Lions, Lockdown Podcast Network. Thank you for making us your first listen, checking us out wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, following us on Twitter at Dairy Speaks, at Lockdown Lions on Twitter, the Matt Dairy Facebook fan page, on threads, uh, at the real Matt Dairy. Uh, what else? I don't know what else to tell you. I mean, this was something else today. <laughs> this was... Give Dan Campbell some credit. I know that sometimes we, we we forget about certain things that the coach does, but his clock management at the end of the game, his balls, as Jared Goff said, at the end of the game on fourth and two in Riley Patterson field goal range at the 26, would have been a what, a 43-yarder. Campbell says, nope, I don't want the Chargers touching the ball at all. Let's go for it. Let's get it. Take a few knees. Patterson kicks a 41-yarder, and the Lions win. All right, Dan Campbell managed the clock beautifully there. He set up his kicker right down the middle, all right? And the Lions did survive, but they got the win. By the way, shout out to Austin Eckler, very good player for the Chargers. His future father-in-law is watching and listening. That would be the great Dean Wilking, Dino, pride of Sterling Heights. Yes, Austin Eckler's fiance is from Sterling Heights. Uh, taught by the legendary Coach Pav. All right? So shout out to Eddie Vedder. Um, Lions win today in in what was, and let's start, let's start with the positives. All right, Jared Goff is damn good. He is. He makes every throw. He's under control. He's cool, calm, and collected. He leads this team. And when push comes to shove at the end of games, I want the ball in number 16's hands. The Lions ran the ball down the Chargers' throats in the first half to the tune of 177 yards. They ran for, what was it, 23 yards in the second half. That's it. They were forced to throw and go off delivered. 333 yards passing, two touchdowns, wasn't sacked, didn't throw a pick. Passer rating of 122.4, and he stood toe-to-toe today with a guy that's always been in the top 10 in some top fives in quarterback rankings and Justin Herbert who sliced and diced future head coach Aaron Glenn's defense. Oh, future head coach is back. 
Oh, that's bad bits back to the tune of 323 and four tutties. And the Lions did not have a single sack today of Justin Herbert. The Lions defense was an embarrassment. All right. That will come in a second. Goff was great, delivered when he had to, made every throw when he had to. He and Amon Ross St. Brown have a chemistry that is unmatched. It really is. I know there, there's there's quarterback and receiver combos that are excellent. We saw another one today with Herbert and Keenan Allen. All right. You, you watch Kirk Cousins and Justin Jefferson when they were healthy, how good they were. You watch the commanders play now and you see Sam Howell and, and the connection that he has with, with McLaurin. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of good, you know, Mahomes and Kelsey. All right. There's good ones. All right. Mahomes and Kelsey is the best. But Goff and Amon Ra are pretty damn good together. St. Brown today, another 100 yard game, eight catches for a buck 56. That's seven of his last eight games, over 100 yards receiving, had a touchdown and a long of 46. He had the screen pass when he just strolled in for a touchdown. Amon Ross St. Brown and Jared Goff just have an unbelievable chemistry. And that ground game in the first half was amazing. Jameer Gibbs. It's funny was I have Jameer Gibbs on my fantasy team and I didn't start him today because I figured with David Montgomery back, the Lions had some issues in just trying to get that whole thing developed on how they're going to play both those guys. And the Chargers run defense have been really good the last five or six weeks. But Jameer Gibbs in the first half went nuts. Finished the game with 77 yards at a couple of touchdowns. Was great as well. Catching three balls for 35 yards. David Montgomery, the 75 yard touchdown run. An excellent block down the field by Jamison Williams. You love seeing J-Mo run all the way down with Montgomery and be there for him and help lead him into the end zone. And you just figured this was going to be one of those games where, man, 17-3, to three, Lions got this. Chargers notoriously gag in these spots. And to L.A.'s credit, they came back, um, made it interesting, to say the least. It was, what, 24-17 at the half. And then third quarters have been the Lions' problem all year. Um, weren't great in the third quarter today, but just could not stop the Chargers in the second half. And really their last, like I said, their last five possessions, going back to the first half, um, the Chargers scored on every one of them with touchdowns. The Lions could not stop Keenan Allen, but offensively, Goff hitting Sam Laporta in big spots, including that fourth and two. Uh, J-Mo had a touchdown pass, which unfortunately was called back due to a bogus penalty on, on Taylor Decker. A uh, Khalif Raymond had that 41 yard catch today. Um, ben Johnson was in his bag with the third and one call of golf play action. Great fake, held it, and then hit Brock right for a touchdown. Yeah, first touchdown of the year for Carly's guy, Brock, the Brock party, Brock Wright. Um, so it was it was one of those days. Goff hit what seven different receivers today, including Brock Wright, and the offense was unstoppable. And they found a way to really utilize both Gibbs and Montgomery in the running game and in the passing game. Give the offensive line a ton of credit. All right, you're going up against Joey Bosa and you're going up against Khalil Mack. Um, Goff wasn't sacked once today. Not once. All right, last week we watched Zach Wilson. I think the Chargers had, what, six sacks in that game? None today on Jared Goff. And when you're putting up 41 points in a game and you've got to outscore the opponent, it was just, it was a track meet. Um, the Lions delivered when it counted. Uh, got the Riley Patterson field goal at the end of the game um, to win it. Two for two on field goals today for Patterson. Jack Fox only had to punt once. How about that? But there's just something special about the golf to St. Brown combination. Heck, they didn't have they didn't even have Donovan Peoples Jones who got hurt during the week in practice and didn't even uh suit up today. He was inactive. And yet the Lions now are four and one on the road. We knew this was going to be a tough game. They're facing a top 10 quarterback on the road in LA. Knew it wasn't going to be easy. Then Herbert started getting going. The Lions walk away, leave LA with a win. 41 to 36. It's our post-game pod right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Matt Derry with you. Thanks for checking us out on our Locked On Lions YouTube channel, by the way. Free to subscribe. Please uh, watch us there. Um, coming up next, let's get into the defense. I, what is there to say? What a, what a horrific performance today.
look, you know, there's going to be games like this. All right. It's an offensive league, although not really this year, but, and, and there were some bad calls, the Sutton interference in the end zone, all these things. But man, the Lions could not stop the Chargers today. We'll get into it coming up next. We got to tell you though about game time. You want last minute tickets to any event? You're looking to buy tickets to your next event and you don't have a lot of time. You don't want to go to one of these other sites and just, you know, scour your way through some stuff. You want something easy. Download the Game Time app. It's fast, it's easy. You can buy tickets to anything, sports, music, comedy, theater events. It's all there on the Game Time app. Plus, they've killer they've got killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, which I love, and their best price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets, all right? Flash deals, zone deals, stuff pops up all the time for great prices on tickets at Game Time. And like I said, the view from all your seats in the venue is the best. You want to sit upstairs, you want to sit downstairs, whatever it is, upper bowl, lower bowl. Uh, that was a great bit back in the day, Joe Louis Arena. Upper bowl, lower bowl, who's who's louder? Anyway, I digress. Uh, the view from your seat function on the app is great on Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem the code L O C K E D O N N F L, and you get twenty dollars off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, folks, Lions win 41 to 38 over the LA Chargers today. First win for the Lions in the Pacific time zone since 2011. 2011, not too bad. Jared Goff throws for over 300 yards, two touchdowns. Gibbs had two touchdowns to get today. David Montgomery comes back, rushes for over 100 yards. There was one stat that I saw today, and we got to find it that Lions PR put out there, and they do a, a a very good job. You know we love the folks at Lions PR. And I had it here somewhere, and what did I do with it? Uh, bu, 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 where is it? The Lions had three players today produce 100-plus scrimmage yards and a touchdown. Amon Ra, Monty, and Ja Gibbs. The only other times Detroit had three players produce 100-plus scrimmage yards and a touchdown in the same game, 2013, 1995, in 1981. That's it. How about that? Also, uh, there was one other one I liked today that I saw. Ba, ba, ba. Oh, yeah. St. Brown has set a career high with 144 receiving yards so far today. This was earlier in the day. He now has six 100-yard receiving games in a seven-game span. Last line to do that, Calvin Johnson in 2012. Amon Ross St. Brown is not just really good in a steal in the fourth round. He's a superstar. Eight catches, 156 yards, and a touchdown. Nobody can stop this guy. He has been that good. Speaking of unstoppable, Justin Herbert and the Chargers offense today. My God. Where do we start on future head coach Aaron Glenn in this defense? Number one, there was no pass rush. None. Zero. And I put out on Twitter that Aiden Hutchinson needs to play better. And, of course, all the Michigan slap he's got on my, got on my back. Uh, the guy hasn't had a sack in three weeks. All right? And if you watched uh, Pipkins, the right tackle play last week against the Jets, he couldn't handle the Jets. And I said, this is going to be Hutchinson eating. Now, were there some plays that he was held? Yes. Was there the one play where he nearly got to Herbert, made him scramble? Yes. Was there the one play when Hutchinson was there on the, the third and goal and made the stop on the running back? Yes. Okay. Aiden Hutchinson did not have a bad game. But the guys opposite of Aiden Hutchinson and the interior defensive linemen right now are not getting home. It's a problem. Not a single sack today of Justin Herbert. Nothing. Lions tried to blitz in the first half with Anzalone. Uh, he had a couple of quarterback hits today early in the game, but that was it. Lions today had got three quarterback hits out of Hutchinson and two out of Anzalone, and that is it. Jared Goff was only hit twice today, so that's a positive. But what are the Lions getting out of Charles Harris right now? Is he even on the team? Levi Onzarike was a healthy scratch today. The Okwara brothers do nothing. Nothing. Julian Okwara had the roughing the passer call, so that doesn't count as quarterback hit. He was kind of there. Aleem McNeil is very good against the run. But if the Lions want to take the next step, they've got to find some edge rushers on the opposite side of Aiden Hutchinson. they got to try something. James Houston 
They need him back. Trade deadline. Oops. Lions didn't do anything. You know, John Kaminsky, I think he had a tackle on the first play of the game, and I never saw him again. One tackle, first play of the game. That was it. They've got there's got to be more. I don't know if they tried Derek Barnes as an edge. I, I don't know what they try to do, but not getting home once. And I know Herbert can scramble and move, but the dude was sacked five times by the Jets last week. Nothing. Nothing worked today. Adjustments. None. Keenan Allen's going in motion. Cam Sutton is your best corner. And by the way, Cameron Sutton today was brutal. Okay. He had a bad day. He's still the best corner on this team. You've got to find a way to get Sutton matched up with Allen, no matter if they put him in motion or not. How many times did they put him in motion and they switched off of him, put Jerry Jacobs on him, and he got destroyed? He couldn't get a stop at all. Tackling, terrible. Derek Barnes, what were you doing today? Anzalone's the only guy I would say today that had a good game on defense. Everybody else was dog meat. Not a, couldn't get a stop. Nothing. Couldn't even force a field goal. Now, again, the eight plays that it took the Chargers to get that goal-to-goal situation, what was that, the third quarter, and the Lions thought they had a stop, only to be called for pass interference on the fourth down on Sutton, which I thought was a ticky-tack call on Johnston. Um, That was a bad break. The guys played hard. But my goodness, you cannot give up 38 points in this league. Lions were lucky. The Charger defense was actually worse. But Lions have got to go back to the drawing board because the Ravens carved them up. They had a legit quarterback at Lamar Jackson. Geno Smith, legit quarterback, carved them up. Mahomes was game one. Lions defense was pretty good. Justin Herbert and the Chargers put up 421 total yards of offense today. That, that's that's ridiculous. What were the third downs today? Uh, 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 uh. Chargers were 7 out of 14 on third down today. They scored five touchdowns on the last five possessions, went 7 out of 14 on third down, and had 421 yards of total, total offense and lost. <laughs> and lost. And Dan Campbell, early in the game, was going for it. I had no, I had no issue with any of it. The only issue I had was on the second time they went for it on the fourth and goal and didn't get it and came away with no points. Um, Jameer Gibbs was on was not on the field. Gibbs on the first possession was amazing. Get him back out there. Other than that, I have no issue with it because Dan Campbell has confidence in his quarterback, confidence in his offensive line, and the weapons. But my gosh, this defense. I mean, last couple of weeks, they see a legit quarterback of Lamar Jackson shreds him. Herbert shreds him. They were lucky they faced Jimmy Garoppolo and a dying Raiders team a couple of weeks ago. Today got ugly. Lack of pass rush. Lack of playmaking. They tried Brian Branch kind of at safety today to start the game, which I thought was a little bit of an indictment on Tracy Walker. That was interesting. But the Lions could use another corner, it seems like. Obviously, no Mosley. No C.J. Gardner-Johnson. Khalil Dorsey played a little bit today. Um, And the edge out opposite right now of uh, Aiden Hutchinson is a problem. None of those guys, whether it's Kaminsky, Pascal, uh, uh, the Oquaras, nobody's coming. Nobody's getting home. It's an issue. And again, Chase Young was there at the deadline. Uh, Montez Sweat was there at the deadline. Daniel Hunter, I know, I doubt the Vikings were going to be trading with the Lions in the division. I know the Lions were not getting Max Crosby, but adding somebody, Brian Burns, somebody. It's too late now. They've got to get home. They can't rush the passer right now. They got home against the Raiders. Number one, the Raiders stink. Number two, Garoppolo is terrible. Number three, it took the second half and blitzing to get them home, to get home. They've got to find a way to get home and disrupt the other team's quarterback. Because today, it was just too easy for Herbert. Way too easy. And Keenan Allen, my God. The Chargers have two guys on offense that could hurt you. Eckler and Allen. Allen today had 11 catches for 175 yards. Was targeted 14 times and two touchdowns. The fourth and one, Lions are discombobulated. They're running guys in and off the field. 
after a timeout. Lions need to take a timeout there because they're all disheveled. And uh, 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 Herbert gets the ball, rolls right. Everybody runs toward the fullback and the tight end, and Allen's alone down the seat. I mean, my God, what's going on out there? Out of a timeout, you're still making substitutions? Lions were all out of, out of place defensively today. Like I said, Anzalone today had nine tackles, four of them solo, a pass defended. He wasn't bad. Kirby Joseph had the interception early in the game. Wasn't bad. But I can't give a game ball when I do the game balls in a second to anybody on the defense because they were atrocious. 41-38 Lions over the Chargers today. I know this team can play better. I know Aaron Glenn can scheme better. But that has got to be cleaned up. Now, next week they're playing the Bears and the law firm of Bajent and Field. So this is not like they're going to be facing Justin Herbert. But later in the season when they have to face Dak Prescott, and oh, by the way, here come the Vikings. They've won five in a row. All of a sudden, Minnesota's six and four. And they got Josh Dobbs balling. No, I'm not saying Josh Dobbs is Justin Herbert or Dak Prescott or Lamar or Geno or Patrick Mahomes. But right now he's playing good football and the Vikings are hanging around. The Lions are going to win this division. They're the best team. They've got to get some things cleaned up on the defensive side of the ball before we can start crowning them. Um, I usually bitch about Tony Romo. I actually have a complaint about Jim Nance. Can I do that coming up next? And we'll hand out some game balls. Locked on Lions brought to you by our friends at FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options for everything, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. You got Monday Night Football tonight or tomorrow night. Um, College basketball is in full swing. NBA, it seems like the Pistons are playing like every night. Wings are over in Sweden. Put some money down at FanDuel. Visit FanDuel.com slash Lockdown and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of Lockdown Podcast Network and the NFL. All right, normally I complain about Tony Romo. Uh, I don't think that, that I, of all the, the elite teams, the Tarico and Collinsworth, Buck and Aikman, um, uh, Burkhart and uh, Olson and Al Michaels and Herb Street, who I think are the worst. All right, Th those two are the worst. And Herb Street's great on college football. Don't get me wrong. I think Michaels is just cooked. But Nance and Romo to me are the second worst. And today, Jim Nance had acted like he hadn't seen the Lions ever. He couldn't name anybody on defense. He kept you could tell he was looking down at his chart or his spotter. He like didn't know the Lions defenders at all. Did I catch him calling Sutton Okuda at one point? Like that was that was a struggle today for Nance. And Romo and his oh Jim, it's just I don't know. To me, Buck and Aikman are the best. I think Tariko and Collinsworth. I think Mike's awesome. I'm a huge Chris fan, but um, and I think Burkhart and Olson do a good job. I'd love we got to get Ian Eagle and Charles Davis for a game. That'd be great. Um, but I thought today Nance was just off. I might be wrong, but that's just me. Uh, all right, game balls today. Who are we handing game balls to? First one, Jared Goff. Again, what can you say about this kid? Goes out to L.A., back at SoFi where he played with the Rams, and he lit up the Chargers. 122.4 passer rating. Game ball goes to that offensive line, too. Every one of them. Jonah Jackson, Taylor Decker, uh, Frank Ragnow. New starting right guard, Graham Glasgow, and Panay Sewell. Panay Sewell held Joey Bosa scoreless today. That's pretty sweet. Um, Amon Ross St. Brown gets a game ball as well. Eight catches, a buck 56, and a touchdown. And Riley Patterson, two field goal makes, including the game winner at the end, 41-yarder, a lot of pressure, knocked it home. Lions win 41-38. Next up, the Bears. The Bumbling Bears coming up on Sunday at Ford Field. We'll have a busy week right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. Thanks for making us your first listen, checking us out wherever you get your podcasts. Um, our everydayers, thank you to all of you as well. Anybody that went out to the game in L.A., tra travel safe. And we'll be back again tomorrow.